Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Desmond Inglesby. I'm speaking to you from Port Shepston, down on the south coast in um, KwaZulu Natal. And this morning, I'd like to introduce you to somebody who um, is going to tell her story uh, about her conversion. Uh, it's always very, uh, wonderful and encouraging for us to hear the story of how God brings us uh, to conversion and of the power of the gospel. And so, I'm going to um, ask uh, Bongoli to uh, a couple of questions about her life and then she's um, going to tell us how she came to know Christ. Um, good morning Bongaluzi, um, just to say to you, can you tell us something about your your uh, work experience and what you're trained to do? Good morning Des, I'm Bongoluzi Pomela, I'm a, a lawyer, I now work in Kokstad, I studied in the University of Transca in the Eastern Cape. Can you tell me something about your training? What what was required of you to become a lawyer? I did my BPROC degree for four years, and then after that I did two years LLB. It was a senior degree then, and I went to the law school for six months in East London. After that I went for articles in legal aid boarding in Tata. I did it, the articles for two years. I wrote my board exams and I passed them and I was got I got admitted in 2007 July right. as an auntie. That sounds very encouraging, but uh, something changed in your life. Uh, you became a lawyer, but you you you, you also became a Sangoma. And we hear a lot about Sangomas in South Africa and people around the world often ask questions about it. Can you tell me what does it mean to be a Sangoma? Yes, there's um Whilst I was practicing as an attorney in Kimberley, I, in legal aid board, I had this calling of Isangom, to be an Isangoma. I had to resign and went back home to the Eastern Cape in Adutua. Um, to be an Isangoma, I had to perform some rituals. I had to use Muti. I, uh, had to, to speak to the ancestors, the ancestors of the dead. Um, so I did all of that. And uh, how did I become a Sangoma? I had these dreams uh, before I became a Sangoma. I had these dreams. They were so uh, strange dreams. I would uh, dream like I'm in a river, I'm performing rituals. I'm wearing beads, white beads, uh, uh, goats and stuff, things like that, yes. the things of Isangomas. So I had to know what was going on in my life. These dreams kept on coming back to me now and then, in fact almost every day. So I couldn't live like that. I did, in fact then, I wasn't attending to it. I think that's when Satan got his way into my life. That's when I got these dreams. And when I, I, I approached someone, some people, they told me that I'm, I'm an, an Isangoma. I'm supposed to be an Isangoma. Okay. And why do, why do people uh, want to see a, a, a Sangoma? What, what does a Sangoma offer them? Right. Um, when a person goes to a Sangoma uh, seeking for help, and a Sangoma um, gives an, uh, a person some sort of an... It's like you, you look to a person's future, you predict his, his or her future, okay. you tell her what's going to happen to her or what is wrong with her. You see what... what other people, normal people, can't see in that person. Yes, and how? And then you, you give that person and motives is. Okay, I was going to ask that question is, how do you, how do you find the answers to those things for those people? Um, it's not like you, you hear voices inside you yes. that tell you that this person you must help her with, with, with this kind of multi or this person is, is having a problem of this nature or you tell, you don't hear voices, but it's something that, 
that is, is inside you. It's unexplainable. Yes. Now, I understand that. Now, you, you're no longer doing that. Um, and that's why we're meeting here this morning and talking, because something has changed in your life. And you're no longer a Sangoma. What, what made you come out of it? Yes, thank you, Des. Um, sometime, um, I think it was 2011, I was an initiator, I was an Isangoma, still practicing as an Isangoma. Um, my sister Lali and I, we were living in Kokstad, we moved to, 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 to here, to Potshepstein. She bought a house here and then I wanted to go to church. I wanted, there was this feeling that even though I am in Sangoma, but I, there's this strong feeling that I, I want to go to church. Yes. I didn't know what was the drive then. I didn't know what was happening to me. Really, I came to church, the nearest church, it was St. Luke's church. Yes. I came to this church and I was wearing my beads and my skin coats as a Nisangoma. Hmm. I attended the church and um, I listened to the word of God and um, I think it, it made me realize that I, I, I need more, there's something missing in my life yes. inside me, there's something missing in my life, I need more, more of this, I need to come more to church and then I, I came now and again in church wearing those beads, those skin coats and nobody questioned me about who I am or what I am because it was everybody could see, yes. the congregation could see, but nobody questioned me. Yes. I just attended the church. And then uh, as the reverend went on to, 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 to visit his members, the members of the church and their homes, he visited, made an appointment with me, he yes. visited me. Sometime last year, used to come to my place with his wife, and uh, I used to defend my 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 being Sangoma. Yes. If we talk with Eric about this, in fact, he will ask me how I feel about this. How I mean, how uh, how does it 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 it, it, it go? a church and, uh, and to be Sangoma and uh, I would try to defend my my, my, my being Sangoma yes. to him and then he would read me scriptures, we would pray together, we would talk about this and one day he came to my house, made, made an appointment with me, came to my house and that day I told myself that I'm going to dodge Eric, I don't want <laughs> I don't, I, I, today I'm not just in the mood of this, I'm going to dodge. And he didn't call me to confirm that he is coming, he just came. Yes. I think God talked with him not to call him, yes. to call me. Yes. And it was on that day, we talked as usual, it was on that day, the 24th of August, yes. 2012. Um, we prayed as always. Um, the prayer that day, it was like different from other prayers. It was uh, some sort of a confession prayer. He put a, a hand on my forehead, or on my head like this. And then he prayed. I had to, to say the words after him. Yes. And then, I don't know, in the middle of the prayer what happened to me, something touched my soul. Something happened inside me. I don't know what was it. I never had that feeling before. Oh. It was the first time. Mm. I, I broke out and cried. He prayed, he prayed. They all prayed in the house. And it was my sister, Tracy, his wife, Eric, and me. He prayed and prayed and prayed, and then after that, um, I was okay. I, I felt like something has been lifted 
on my shoulder. I felt so, 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 there was something like that, that was taken off. I don't know. I never had that feeling before. <clears throat> and um, I felt free. I felt peace inside me. I, I felt like I'm, I'm, I'm another person. Before, before that, I was, uh, I was like practicing as in Sangoma. I was always in fear, not doing this, do that. You are in Sangoma, and uh, I was not at peace at all with myself. But I had to do it anyway because. I heard that if I don't do it, because the ancestors, they've called me to do this, if I don't practice as, as an Isangoma, uh, I'm going to get crazy or get sick or this and that. I'll have an accident or my family will be cursed or this and that. Yes. That was what I knew. Okay. Can I ask you a question then? As far as you, you used... Um the word peace and and being free. What do you believe happened to you? What what set you free or who set you free? What peace do you have that you're speaking about? Um, how would you describe the change in your life? I accepted Jesus Christ as my savior, as the one who's who's gonna who's gonna forgive my sins. Yes. As he died for me. I accepted that, I acknowledged that, and then that's when he helped me. He saw <coughs> that I was in trouble because I wanted to serve God. I wanted to be in God, yes. and I am in trouble. Then I needed help, and he was there for me. Jesus Christ saved me. Wonderful. That's the great news, and that's what I wanted to end with today is to say that what uh, Bongo Lutu has said is true of all of us. We are all in trouble of one sort or another. The problem is the problem of sin, and the problem is that, uh, of sin leads us into darkness. Now, for Bongo Lutu, there was a particular set of circumstances that she faced in her life, but we all face the, uh, our own situations because sin leads us away from God. It leads us into a state of lostness, where we need to be found, and it is only through Jesus Christ that we can be freed. And so the story you have heard today is a personal story, it's a personal testimony, but yet it is repeated millions of times over, down through history, and will continue to be repeated, is the story of the life-saving gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, who can deliver us, whatever our circumstances may be, because at the end of the day, our greatest problem is sin. It's the common problem for all mankind. And it is from that sin that Jesus came to deliver us. So I trust today that Bongoletu's testimony will be a great encouragement and a challenge to you. Bongoletu, thank you so much. And may God bless you. We are delighted to have you here at St. Luke's. And we are thrilled to hear of what God has done in your life. And we pray that he will continue to use you also as a lawyer, but as a Christian and as a woman um, to serve him. And we, we thank God for his saving grace in your life. May the Lord bless you richly. Thank you. God bless you.